Now at 6. Local police are looking for a man who stabbed a woman multiple times. Tonight, we know that the officers believe they knew each other. And we're just learning the name of a man shot to death in Trinity County. Deputies tell us the man was armed, but that they did the shooting. Plus, after pressure from both sides of the aisle, Attorney General Jeff Sessions has recused himself after information about ties to Russia. We'll tell you about the independent investigation. North Coast News at 6 starts now. Live from our studio in downtown Eureka, you're watching North Coast News on KAEF ABC 23. At 6, get the facts right. Tonight, police are looking for the person responsible for a stabbing. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Nazi Javid. Scott and Karen are off tonight. Police say a woman was stabbed early this morning in a residential neighborhood. And now they're looking for the suspect. North Coast News' Louis Ramirez talked to neighbors and police. He now joins us in the studio. Louis, tell us what you know. Is the public in any danger? Nazi police are telling me at this point they believe the suspect and the victim knew each other. But right now they say it's still too early to confirm that. For neighbors, the news of a stabbing doesn't bring peace of mind. One man we talked to says... That's just shocking and disturbing. Eureka police officers tell me they responded to a reported stabbing on 14th Street between Pine and Summer around 2 Thursday morning. I just heard the lady say that um, you're hurting me and if you continue to hurt me then I'm going to call the police. I came outside and I yelled like, hey, what's going on? And then I didn't see anything or anybody, just heard some kind of off noise in the back. Officers say the victim, a 30-year-old woman from Petrolia, was walking with a man. And for reasons still under investigation, he ended up stabbing her multiple times. I don't want people to be worried that some random person was attacked on the street. That doesn't appear to be the case. However, again, I stress it's preliminary stages, and we're still determining the exact relationship between the two. Oh, I got to be more cautious and be aware of my surroundings and be on the lookout. Uh, due to the seriousness of her condition, she was flown out of the area to another trauma center, uh, and I don't have any updates on her condition at this time. I hope she gets better. I hope they catch the person that they did it. I hope that this does not continue in this neighborhood because we have neighbors here, and it's a good community. Tonight, EPD officers tell me they're going through surveillance footage of the scene. They hope the video will allow them to find, apprehend, and arrest the person responsible. In the studio, Louis Ramirez, North Coast News. New at 6 tonight, we were finally able to get more information about a deadly officer-involved shooting that happened in Trinity County two weeks ago. Deputies tell us they responded to the Indian Creek, Tra Creek Trailer Park in Douglas City. This was at around 4 in the afternoon on Thursday, February 16th. They were responding to an armed man who has been identified as 22-year-old Jonathan J. Daniel Simmons. The sheriff's office tells us one deputy fired at the man, killing him. A GoFundMe has been set up for Danny's funeral. There is still little information being released at this time, but we'll continue to update you when the details are released. In Del Norte County, a man was found guilty of 20 separate charges and allegations and faces over 300 years in prison. The DA's office says that a jury found Roger Lee Roberts of Crescent City guilty yesterday afternoon of 10 counts of unlawful sexual intercourse with a minor, four counts of furnishing meth to the minor, and one special allegation for impregnating that minor, eventually resulting in the birth of a baby who was positively confirmed as Robert's child. Robert has, Roberts has two prior convictions for lewd and lascivious acts on a child under 14, those from back in 1987 and 2000. He will be sentenced on March 30th. Across the country, a mother and father say their son was the victim of police misconduct, and newly released dash cam video may prove it. Tonight, the Georgia family grieving their son who died at the hands of law enforcement. ABC's Aaron Katursky reports. August 31st, 2015 was the last night of Nicholas Dykesma's life. He'd been sleeping in his truck. They woke him up and startled him, and he drove away. The 18-year-old led police in Columbus, Georgia, on a high-speed chase. Then they caught him. Police smashed in his truck windows and pulled out their stun guns. They tased Dykesma several times and dragged him from the vehicle. One deputy put his knee on the teen's neck while they handcuffed him. Later, that same deputy put his knee again on Dykesma's neck. And he hadn't committed a crime, and they killed him. And I got a problem with that. And they should be held accountable. The video then shows the teen unresponsive. He later died. You still up? Hey. Nicholas, wake up. 
Some minutes passed before deputies began CPR. These officers killed this teenager and then they stood there and watched him die. In a telephone interview with ABC affiliate WSB, the Harris County attorney said the Harris County Sheriff and I do not think it's appropriate to comment on potential or pending litigation. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation said the case has been handed over to the district attorney. Their report says the manner of death is homicide caused by stun guns, compression of the neck and torso, and acute amphetamine intoxication. Nicholas's parents said they want justice. I want to know why 18 months later we don't have answers. I think they should be punished. And the Dykesmas said they want the case to go before a jury. Aaron Katursky, ABC News, New York. Back on the North Coast, a motorcyclist in the hospital tonight after colliding with a car. EPD says it happened around 12.50 this afternoon on Bune and 3rd Streets. According to witnesses, both vehicles were stopped. The motorcyclist had the right-of-way, but the car drove out too early, hitting him. Officers tell us he was taken to the hospital with a broken leg. And multiple earthquakes reported off the coast of Humboldt County pretty much in the same spot. According to the USGS, the first was a 3.9 magnitude quake. It hit around 1230 this afternoon, a little over 20 miles southwest of Rio Del. The second was about an hour later, measuring at just a 2.9. And also about 20 miles southwest of Rio Del, no injuries or damage was reported. And a smoke-filled sky today near H and Oak Streets in Eureka. That's what a concerned citizen reported when the individual called 911 to report a fire right across the street from Grant Elementary School. We checked, and Humboldt Bay Fire officials tell us, luckily, it was just a false alarm. We don't always know when everybody's burning, but uh, uh, they, they have to go through a process to get the permits, and uh, he was well within his, his right to be burning. The fire department says the smoke came from a resident who was conducting a controlled burn in his yard. It started with a rental ordinance that cost the Coastal Commission is reviewing for the city of Trinidad. Private citizens sent around a petition asking the Coastal Commission for a speedy decision. According to City Manager Dan Berman, Mayor Dwight Miller also signed that petition. He says the city is now talking to the Trinidad city lawyer and a second lawyer to find out if this was a violation of the Brown Act. City officials in Trinidad are investigating whether or not the mayor violated the Brown Act. So the Brown Act is a state law uh, intended to provide transparency in government. So it uh, mandates that um, a, a legislative body like a city council um, can't get together in the back room and make decisions. If that was a city decision, then arguably a petition, it should have been a decision made at a city council meeting. And that's where things get kind of complicated is when can you take your hat off as a city official? He added that the city attorney said he does not believe that Mayor Miller violated the Brown Act. The incident now being reviewed by that second attorney. The decision will be revealed at the next city council meeting this Wednesday. And we reached out to Mayor Miller for comment. He said, quote, there is no fire behind this smoke report. My only reason for serving as a city official is to give back. And further south, a small creature caused big problems for air travelers trying to get to San Francisco. Lily and Kim has the story. British Airways passengers arrived at SFO exhausted. Their London to San Francisco flight delayed more than four hours because of a mouse on board. It was spotted when everyone was buckled up, ready to go. Somebody saw a mouse that scurried under one of the doors. Um, they kept us on the plane for about 15 minutes, told us that we had to get off the plane because they couldn't fly with a mouse. Passengers went back to the terminal while the airline looked for another Boeing 777. Despite the delay, many kept their sense of humor intact. It's clear the mouse can't enter U.S. airspace without a passport, but, you know, <laughs> in general, I think it makes sense because I wouldn't really want to eat food on a plane that had a mouse. It's unclear how the mouse got on the plane, but the rule is if there is one on board, the aircraft is forbidden to fly. Otherwise, the consequences can be dangerous. They have the ability to gnaw through a lot of things, including wiring. And this is one of the last things you want is something gnawing through the wiring on a jetliner, whether it's in flight or not. When Flight 285 was finally ready to go, British Airways said everyone holding their own passport is now on their way to California. And we are sorry for the delay. I think if you ever see a mouse, you don't tell anybody. <laughs> that would be my advice, unless you have five hours to kill. A tiny mouse that caused a big inconvenience for hundreds of passengers. Wow.
one local library is taking technology into their own hands. Find out about their new gizmo on our new segment, Cyber Corner, coming up on North Coast News. And it's not just Democrats now calling for Attorney General Jeff Sessions' resignation. After information about there being multiple conversations between Sessions and the ambassador to Russia, we'll have the latest on an independent prosecutor and local reactions. Plus, we're looking at cloud cover increasing tonight, and showers are expected in Del Norte County tomorrow afternoon. Here on the North Coast, we'll likely see the wet weather tomorrow night, and First Alert meteorologist Rob Elvington will have all of that information for you coming up. And now you can get the coverage of the North Coast in the palm of your hand with the North Coast News TV app. Get daily alerts on what's happening in your community, plus daily and extended forecasts, live radar, severe weather alerts, and more. Download the app for free on any device. Dan, we'll be right back. You're watching North Coast News on KAEF ABC 23. Unstoppable. Judge Judy. Weekdays on ABC 23. Accuracy. It's a standard we set for ourselves every day here at North Coast News, and we don't take it lightly. We check to make sure we have the whole story and that the information is correct before we bring it to you. We know your trust needs to be earned, and that's why being accurate and clear is so important to us. We get it right for you so that you can depend on us. North Coast News. Get the facts right. Round tables raise the bar in Italian flavor with a new Magnifico Ultimate and Wombo Combo pizzas. With pancetta and capicola added to our primo pepperoni and Asiago Romano and Parmesan cheese, along with our famous three cheese combination for pizzas with true Italian abundance. Each just $19.99 for a large, and the original Ultimate and Wombo Combo are each just $19.99 too. Order online or come into Round Table and upgrade your pizza experience to Magnifico. <laughs> Round Table, the last honest pizza. At Simply Performance Automotive in Arcata, we know how hard it is getting your vehicle serviced with a busy schedule, so we've made it easy. We're open on Saturdays. Choose Simply Performance for wheel alignments, brakes and adjustments, regular scheduled maintenance, plus engine and transmission work. Get Simply Better Service from Simply Performance Automotive. You know, we work hard for our money, and they do too. On Gentali Lane, next to TP Tire. Open on Saturdays. Well, Ladies' menu changes every week. It's based on local, seasonal, and organic ingredients. So every Tuesday, we print a new menu. My best option for menu printing has become post-taste. I can email my menus to them. They treat me like a neighbor rather than just a customer. With Notary Public Mailbox Rentals, live scan fingerprinting and professional packing, we're here to make your business life easier. Don't waste your time at the post office. Send it post-taste. Your one-stop local shipping solution. Welcome back. We do have winter storm watches already issued for our next system. That'll be moving in by as early as tomorrow afternoon. Most of the North Coast is going to have to hold off until late tomorrow night, and it's your Saturday. It's mainly for elevations above 2,000 feet, where we can see 5 to 10 inches of snow possible. And again, it's for areas shaded in white, and that colder air is going to continue to pile in uh, through your Saturday into your Sunday and Monday. On the radar right now, just seeing a few showers just off to the north and northwest. Most of these are sprinkles and even evaporating before it reaches the ground. But as we zoom out on the satellite and radar, what we're really keeping an eye on is this cold front. You can see it right here, uh, the cold air behind the cold front, allowing for those speckled clouds. And that'll be tapping into a little bit more moisture off to the west. And that'll be, again, moving in by tomorrow evening and into your Saturday. Current conditions right now in the 6 o'clock hour, 48 degrees in Crescent City, a north wind at 6 miles per hour, visibility at 10 miles. Arcadia Eureka area at 48 degrees, north wind at 9 miles per hour. So walk you through precision cast through the rest of this evening late tonight. Uh, you'll notice some clouds streaming through and with those clouds overhead that should keep most areas a little bit warmer tonight and into tomorrow morning. So we do not have a frost advisory in place for some of those lower elevations like we have the last couple of days. And then into 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, you'll notice starting to see some rain moving into Del Norte County. Most of the rain off to the west and northwest. And we'll let this go all the way through uh, the mid-afternoon hours tomorrow. Get best chances of seeing some rain before tomorrow evening as you get further off to the north, closer to Del Norte County. 
The main front again still off to the northwest. And then that main front's going to clear the north coast late tomorrow night into early Saturday morning. But even behind the main cold front, we're going to continue to see scattered showers moving into the north coast. This is right around lunchtime on Saturday, but still plenty more showers, maybe even some thunderstorms moving in. We've got some pretty cold air aloft behind that cold front. And with any little bit of heating and even the, the heat of the ocean, that can allow for those pop-up showers and thunderstorms to develop. So likely even some small hail uh, developing with some of these cells moving in through this weekend. This is a look at our in-house forecast model precision cast for precipitation totals. This goes all the way through 1 o'clock on Sunday, but keep in mind we're going to continue to see the chance for rain amount of snow through the rest of the day on Sunday into Monday, likely even into Tuesday and Wednesday. But by Tuesday and Wednesday, it's basically just some hit or miss showers, not nearly as widespread. Your rain forecast for tomorrow, winds out of the southwest at 5 to 15 knots, waves out of the northwest at 6 feet at a period of 12 seconds. On the top of the screen, that lower banner, that those are the tides for tomorrow. Sustained winds, this is right around 4 o'clock tomorrow. Again, you see those south and southwesterly winds picking up. Stronger winds as yet further offshore, those blue arrows indicating sustained winds around 20 miles per hour. So your forecast for tomorrow, expecting most areas to run a little bit cooler as you head into the inland, but as you head closer to the water, it could actually be a little bit warmer. Highs right around 55 degrees in Willow Creek, 56 degrees in Fortuna. Garberville still managing to make it up to 60. So we're still on the warm side of that cold front, so still plenty of warm air in place. Uh, Mid-50s for Eureka tomorrow, closer to the low 50s for Crescent City. In your seven-day forecast for the coast, uh, we're tracking mostly dry conditions for, let's say, Humboldt County through tomorrow evening. You head further off to the north again, you could see some showers as early as tomorrow morning. Uh, breezy conditions with that cold front moving in. And then we're tracking rain chances all the way through Wednesday. But keep in mind, once we get to about 2 Tuesday afternoon and into Wednesday, it's going to be hit or miss showers, not nearly as widespread as Saturday, Sunday, or even Monday. Your inland forecast, look at those snow levels on the bottom of the screen. Some really cold air will help to drop those snow levels by Saturday night and into Sunday. Stay with us, more news coming up. Hi, I'm Danny O. For years, I've coached local baseball. I'm also a local agent with Discreet Bale. Unfortunately, bad things sometimes happen to good people. I offer confidentiality first. I'll coach you to court with a really low down and flexible payment. If your case goes longer than a year, we'll waive our fees for the next year. The big bail companies won't do that. 707-672-4898. With discreet bail, you're safe at home. I am never getting married. Never. Guaranteed. You picked a beautiful ring. Thank you. Mm. We're never having kids. Mm -mm. Ah. I love it here. We are never moving to the suburbs. We are never getting one of those. We are never having another kid. I'm pregnant. I'm never letting go. For all the nevers in life, talk to State Farm agent Scott Hammond in Eureka. State Farm is there. with a twist bigfoot's new and recycled treasures where you can find anything you can think of with locally made art and music to boot open 10 to 5 tuesday through saturday this portion of the news sponsored in part by sherry heights casino you're watching north coast news on kaef abc 23 at 6 with scott Lakes, karen bright and First Alert Meteorologist Rob Elvington. Get the facts right. Happening now, congressional Democrats are asking for a criminal investigation to be opened into statements made by Attorney General Jeff Sessions. This following new revelations that Sessions met twice with the Russian ambassador during the 2016 campaign. ABC's Lana Zak is in Washington with the very latest details on this developing story. Gay false testimony. Democratic lawmakers gathered outside the Department of Justice demanding Attorney General Jeff Sessions resign following revelations that he met twice with the Russian ambassador during the 2016 campaign. But the president is standing by him. Mr. President, you still have confidence in the Attorney General, sir. Total. But other Republicans expressed more doubt. It would be best if he simply recused himself from this investigation. Sessions says his meetings were not as a Trump campaign official and were appropriate as a senator. It's really common for members of Congress to meet with ambassadors. But Democrats say that's not the issue. There's nothing inappropriate with a senator meeting with the Russian ambassador. 
There is something very inappropriate to dramatically mislead Congress. Judge for yourself. Here is Sessions under oath in his own words. I have been called a surrogate at a time or two in that campaign, and I did have, not have communications with the Russians, um, and I'm unable to comment on it. And in a questionnaire, he was asked, several of the president-elect's nominees or senior advisors have Russian ties. Have you been in contact with anyone connected to any part of the Russian government about the 2016 election, either before or after Election Day? He responded, no. And here's a little bit of a timeline. On September 7th, then-candidate Donald Trump made national and international headlines for calling the Russian president far more of a leader than President Obama. On the next day, September 8th, Senator Sessions hosted the Russian ambassador for a one-on-one -on -one meeting in his office. The president said today he was not aware of that meeting. Lana Zak, ABC News, Washington. And locally, we wanted to know what locals think of the Sessions recusing himself from the Russia probe. We got reaction. Take a listen. It wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. I what heard he has ties to Russia, so. Uh, maybe it might be possible. A government could do anything. Democrats say they want a special prosecutor to investigate questions about Russia. But GOP officials say they don't have sufficient leverage to bring about such a step. And still ahead on North Coast News, want a little piece of Snapchat? Now you can own some. Daniel Raiden breaks down all things that are tech and trending in our new Cyber Corner segment. But first, be our eyes and ears in your community when you see breaking news. See it, snap it, share it, or take a picture and some video and post it to our Facebook page, North Coast News TV. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You're watching North Coast News on KAEF ABC 23. The Heights is turning 29, and we're celebrating all month long with our 29th birthday blowout. Even though it's our birthday, the prizes are all for you with over $20,000 up for grabs. We're giving away cash prizes each Friday from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. And at 10 p.m., we give away a cash prize of $2,900. More entertainment, more fun, more winning. Visit SherryHeights.com for all the details. Time to switch to a new plan from U.S. Cellular with no hidden fees. Let's show your old carrier what you think of their plan with hidden fees. Data overage is gone. I've had enough. Everyone's had enough. Monthly connection charges, gone. That's on my bill? Oh. Activation fees, gone. Oh. Doesn't that feel better? New plans with no hidden fees, including unlimited data for $40 a month. Welcome to the Center for Wound Care and Hyperbarics at Mad River Community Hospital, where we heal wounds and improve patients' lives. Providing outstanding wound care is our entire focus. We are experienced in healing chronic wounds, including wounds from diabetes or radiation therapy. Since 2004, we've used hyperbaric chambers for life-saving hyperbaric oxygen therapy. If you or a loved one are experiencing difficulties healing a wound, please contact your primary physician for a referral. Not only do we heal wounds, we heal people's lives. This portion of the news sponsored by Northwood Chevrolet and Hyundai. Now it's time for our new Cyber Corner segment where we break down technology news and all other things trending on social media, all with a local twist. Here's North Coast News' Daniel Raiden. Hi, welcome to the Cyber Corner. A library in Humboldt County is putting technology first with fun new gadgets. I went to the McKinleyville Public Library today to check out their 3D pen. It takes molten plastic and lets you craft three-dimensional designs. The library got it with a grant and is using it to teach children about technology. It's really important to develop to develop not just familiarity with new technologies, but to have that process of exploring something you don't know how to do. Someone wrote a very sweet Valentine's message for their mom in red. And I even tried it myself, though I probably need some practice. Oh, there it goes. I guess I'm making a squiggle. This is my crazy creation. If you like sharing Snapchat videos, how about getting shares of Snapchat? Stock market shares, that is. The social media giant just went public today with more than 200 million shares, and it's already up 44%. People use Snapchat, so therefore um, the shares, if you buy enough shares, uh, the, the stock can go up. You shouldn't need Snapchat because you always be on your phone too much. It seems like social media can kind of, it's kind of hit or miss. 
Amazon says they now know why their web services shut down. It was human error. The outage caused dozens of big websites to go black this week. The company says an employee was trying to debug the billing system and accidentally took down online servers. That led to a domino effect, with many users getting this all too familiar message when they went to a website. You should be fired. <laughs> I think that's one of the things with technology is sometimes it breaks down, sometimes it fails. I'm Danielle Radin. This has been Cyber Corner. Back to you. Love that segment. All right. Thanks, Danielle. The McKinleyville Kmart is trying to make shopping fun again by hosting an in-store event this Saturday. Families are encouraged to head into the store and add a pop of color to their purchases with the help of an airbrush graffiti artist. This free event includes an airbrush customization station that features Joe Boxer clothing and risewear shoes. Customers can also earn 10 bucks back in points for every $40 they spend on those brands. The event is from noon to four on Saturday. And new tonight at 6, the famous rusty gold-loving duo Mike Wolf and Frank Fritz looking to make their way back to Humboldt County. But first, they need to find the perfect junkyard candidate. Mike and Frank anticipate being in the area in spring, but first, they need people that have unique antique quirky items they like buying. And of course, the story that goes with the junk. One local antique picker, Raymond Hillman, says having the duo back in the area will help preserve historical pieces that otherwise would be lost. It's going to be kind of hard for them to uh, do this unless they are fortunate in making some good local contacts who know people who have, have stashed away things. And, and I know they're there, but they're, sometimes they're, they're hard to seek out. Hillman also says this will be a great opportunity to the rest of the world to see what Humboldt County has to offer. If you want to reach out to the Antique Duo, we will have that information for you on our website. And stay with us. We'll be right back. You're watching North Coast News on KAEF ABC 23. Hey everybody, it's Don Hackett again for Humboldt County's Northwood Auto Plaza, located at 7th and D Streets right here in Eureka. At Northwood Auto Plaza, we're fast, we're friendly, and we're fun. And above all, we love to tell people, yes. From selecting the vehicle to working out your deal, you'll find everything is very easy here at Northwood. For Chevrolet, Hyundai, or a great selection of used cars, let's make the next yes yours. Everything at Turnstile Cycle is about keeping it simple. So when Matt Muschek needs to quickly fill empty spots for an upcoming class, he logs into his Constant Contact account. In just a few clicks, he's able to create and send a great looking email that reaches customers everywhere and drives people to the door. It makes things so easy. For Matt, anyway. Matt's a marketer, and all it took was Constant Contact. Start your free trial at ConstantContact.com. I'm Graham Charleston from Charleston Tree and Lawn Service. Removing hazardous trees, trimming, chopping, or pruning backyard trees. We can do it all. Just give us a call. 707-497-4471 for a free estimate. Plan ahead and reduce hazards or open up view for the sunlight. Got a storm emergency? Call us. We're ready 24-7. Plus, we do lawn care, field mowing, and yard maintenance. For all of your growing concerns, whether you'd like to prune it, plant it, or remove it, Charleston Tree and Lawn Service, covering all of Humboldt County. This portion of the news, sponsored in part by Redwood Capital Bank. Giraffe Watch! That's right, it's time for Giraffe Watch as millions watched a live webcam eagerly awaiting the arrival of a baby giraffe in New York. Surprise! Another baby giraffe showed up unannounced in Denver. Little Dobby was born Tuesday at the Denver Zoo and it's doing well. Officials say the preg pregnancy itself was unplanned and that Dobby's mother was actually on birth control. Wow, I never knew animals were taking the pill, but I guess it's a good lesson. The pill doesn't always work. And for all your news and weather updates, check out our news app. ABC World News is next. And of course, don't miss Kelly Som and Chief Meteorologist Mike Kruger each morning on Daybreak. I'll see you at 10 and 11. Good night.